we've got Lightroom 5 open, and we are in Infinite Skills underscore 2 library. And we got two of them now. We have Infinite Skills and Infinite Skills 2. You can see it right up here. You will probably be able to get to it under Open Recent. But if you don't see it and you don't have it open, you can always go here and find it. But we want to be in this catalog. We have three raw images from my Nikon camera, and we need more stuff before we proceed. So let's go to the word import down here. Go ahead and locate Catalog 2, and you will notice it grays out the ones we've already got. Now, it has nothing to do with suspected duplicates. We already have them in that folder. These are the ones I want anyway, so it's, well, it's perfect. Now, what I want to do is copy these as DNGs. NEF means the raw image on a Nikon. You're on a Canon, it'll say RAW. That's proprietary raw data. By proprietary, I mean that the code written to save the information was written by Nikon or Canon or whatever, not by Adobe. They give it to Adobe. Adobe does what they need to do. So what happens here is it's possible that 10 years from today, you're storing these images and the original NEFs are RAWs, and you can't open them because they're no longer supported. If you copy them as DNGs, you're not losing anything but you're getting a format that's going to be supported forever. So I would suggest at least exploring the DNG. Now the other way we did it, a little bit earlier, we just said add. And so we added NEFs. We're adding DNGs. But I want to mention one more thing here. When you're importing information into a folder, and I've gotten this question from students, and it's kind of like, well, Andy, I get a subfolder. I didn't really want them in a subfolder. And it's got like a date to it or something, and I didn't ask for the date, although that's cool. But where is it getting all this stuff from? Now, the default here, this is where they are, what you're doing with them, where they're going. The default, and I've already changed that, is into your pictures folder on Mac or Windows. So it goes in there by default. If I come down here, I can change the destination. Now, I've already done that. If I click here, you can go into affected folders only, all folders. You can see all your folders. Now, all I want is the affected folder only, so I click here again, because that's where I want them. I don't want them in a subfolder, so I turn that off, and where it says organize, I say organize into one single folder. That's how this works. Now, when I click import, they will come in, and I'll have them in the same folder. And here we go. It shouldn't take it too long. It's only four images. Now, they are up here, it's building the previews up here, because it is showing us a, kind of like a collection, if you will, of the previous imported images, which is what we just did. But if we come down here, see, they are all in that one catalog. So if you're having this, I don't want all these extra subfolders. I don't want subfolders with dates. I just want them here. Try that, it should work for you. So we have seven images now. Three of them are raw. And four of them are DNGs, digital negatives. Now let's come up here for a second. And let's go into Lightroom if you are on a Macintosh or Edit if you're in Windows and go into Catalog Settings. Now don't forget we have this turned on. Automatically write changes into XMP. And remember the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, it created an XMP file. It was a separate file to the actual document itself. Remember that. Let's open up one of these images. How about this one right here? This is called a cottage pie. And I was so proud. Actually, it's in my cookbook. So I actually took a photograph of it for the cookbook. And there you go. I want to play with it just a little bit, maybe. So let's go into some of our basic stuff here in Develop. Like we have, oh, for example, exposure. And we can come over here. And let's go ahead and make it a little bit actually lighter. Maybe something like that. I love vibrance, clarity and vibrance. I like things like this. Let's pull that down just a little bit. And if you want to soften these up, that's what clarity does. I don't know why I like that a lot, but I really do. Okay, we have made some changes to this image. We asked it to save an XMP, didn't we? Let's right-click on it. That's just the quickest way to get there and say Show in Finder. Now, you can see there is no XMP. Say, well, you told it to save one. Well, watch this. Let me right-click on it and say open it inside of Photoshop. The stuff is there. It looks soft. The colors have changed. 
just like it was inside of Lightroom. Now, here's the thing. Let's get out of here and go back into Lightroom. When you make changes to a DNG, a digital negative, it's different than when you make changes to a raw image in this respect. When you're modifying a raw image, and that could be an NEF, REW, whatever your raw is, when you're modifying it and you have that option on over here, it does create the Sidecar XMP file. It's a separate file. Here's the difference. If you're doing it inside of this program as a DNG, it is saving the XMP data, but a DNG holds it as one file. So it is there. It's just that we don't have to worry about the extra file. That's the difference between a DNG and an XMP if you're saving that extra what's called a sidecar file. Let's get out of here. You might say that since that's important, since I do go to Photoshop, since I am going into other programs, why would I not come up here all the time and make sure that when I put the settings together that that's on? Well, let me explain what happens when you turn that on. Every time you use and change an image, it has to stop in Lightroom to write the information into the additional file, whether it's part of the DNG, it doesn't matter, or it is part of the raw file in the separate XMP. It's still got to do that, so things slow down. I use it when I need it. And how do you do that? Well, let's look at what we have. Right now, we're looking at a develop on a DNG. If I go up to the word photo, you have save metadata to file, update DNG preview and metadata, depending on which one you're doing, a raw or a DNG. If the file is not by default using the setting under Lightroom catalog settings, if it's not set up to save that information, you can have one image open, just one, but you know that one image is going into Photoshop, so at that moment you need that information you can do it right here just for the one image. I can say save metadata to file or update the DNG if I'm working on a DNG and it will only do it to that one image. So if you do turn this on, it will do it to every single image and it slows the catalog down in processing. It's not horrible. It's getting a lot better than it was say two or three versions ago. But if you don't turn that on, which means it's not gonna save that information, I can create a file make changes to it, and then come up to the word photo and do it directly from here. Now, if I'm in the library, I can do it here too. If I select an image that I've made changes to and I forgot to actually add that data, it's not under the word photo, it's under the word metadata. And you can say save the metadata to that file, or if this were a DNG, which it isn't, update the DNG preview and metadata. Either way you choose, you have control over whether you save that information in a form that can be read by other programs like Photoshop or you don't. It's up to you.